How do you write a killer headline that sells like crazy? Well, let's find out today. I'm John Benson with Sales Copy Secrets. All right, so listen, I'm at the gym today and literally people are asking me, while well, texting me while I'm at the gym, can you do something on headlines? Can you do something on headlines? So I came home from the gym, I didn't even shower. I know that's TMI if I believed in TMI, but that's the truth. I was so excited, I just threw on a shirt and ta-da, here I am in front of you all sweaty and everything. So I'm gonna tell you all about creating headlines today. I'm gonna to give you a very basic formula that anyone can follow, super beginner, friendly here. One that you can expand upon, we'll expand upon it as we go, and I'm gonna take you all the way down the rabbit hole if you'll come with me to absolutely kick ass, blazingly hot headlines that sell like crazy because they tap into different modes of persuasion. Okay, before we start, I want you to smash that like button, demolish it, pulverize it? Whatever. And take a second to subscribe below. So let me cover, first of all, the purpose of a headline. Then we're gonna cover what modes of persuasion are, and then we're gonna get into the formulas. First of all, why even have a headline? That sounds like a dumb question, but it's actually not. Most people think the purpose of a headline is to be clever or to say something insightful or to write you know, Shakespearean-like poetry. It's nothing like that. The purpose of a headline, the only purpose of a headline is to get enough attention to make the reader read the next sentence, whether that's the subheadline, whether that's watch a video, and that's in that case it's an action, whether that's read the first sentence of your sales letter, that is the entire function. It really is. Now, we can add to the function of that to make it a little better by saying, what if we could also embed something inside that headline that will make the, the reader's subconscious mind go, oh, I wanna know more about that. That sounds pretty freaking cool. I wanted to keep reading until they do tell me about that. Well, that's like headline on steroids. That's what we wanna to write today. But the true purpose of a headline is to do nothing more than grab attention and to read the next sentence. Now, with one caveat that I need to say, the headline needs to be congruent with the topic. In other words, if you're writing about, as we're gonna be doing, talking about today as my sample, we're talking, we're talking about dogs, okay? <laughs> dogs peeing in the house. That's gonna be the, the example I'm gonna give in the, in the tutorial. Rover, out. If that's your subject and you say free money at the top of the page, obviously that's gonna get attention, right? But it's not gonna get the attention you want. It's gonna get very bad attention and of course you will be put in Facebook jail if you're advertising on Facebook. And as, as well you should be, unless you are giving away free money of course, then if you are, I'll put my address below in the comments. So let's talk about those three modes of persuasion. Three, count them three. Wants, needs, and fears. Now you may be thinking to yourself, Wants and needs, same thing, John. No, a lot different. <laughs> you can want something and not need it, right? You can need something and not necessarily want to do it. For example, let's say that you need to lose weight. Your doctor said, if you don't lose weight, you're going to die early or you're gonna have high blood pressure. You don't really want to lose weight. What you want is to look sexy naked. What you want is to look great in a swimsuit or whatever your weight loss want might be, but you need to lose weight. They are very distinct quite a bit different and you need to learn the differences to be an effective copywriter. Let's dive into the first formula based on a very simple equation. Ready? That equation is verb promise. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's it. Verb promise. As easy as it gets. Now, for our first example, we're going to do, for example, we're going to do a positive and a negative headline. So a negative headline would be one that, that focuses on more pain and more fear, because again, those three, those three modes we're talking about, you wants, pleasures, and fears, or wants, needs, and fears, rather. So you want to go into and test both. You want to test both fears, and you want to test both wants and needs. So how do we do this? Well, let's say verb, stop, stop your dog from peeing in the house. I know, it, it's, it's rocket science, it really is. Stop your dog from peeing in the house, explanation point. There's your headline. Now, is that the greatest headline ever written? No, but that, would that headline work? Of course it would work. <laughs> the headline has been used exactly in its form very successfully on sales pages before. So stop your dog from being in the house. Really simple, right? Now, 
Your stop your dog from peeing in the house. Your dog peeing in the house is a what? It's a fear. You don't like it, right? So it's also a positive thing. So it's kind of in the middle here. We're kind of in the middle. It's like, you know, uh, get your dog to obey on command. Okay, that's a, that's a way of saying something positive. So I just turn that into something from a negative to a positive. Now, what can we do for that rather simple, little bit bland headline to spruce it up a little bit? Well, first thing we can do is you can add what's called a without statement behind the headline. Stop your dog from peeing in the house without lifting a finger, without spending three hours a day training and without hiring a trainer is what I would say, without hiring a trainer, without, uh, uh, you can just fill in whatever the withouts are. Now I'm not a dog peeing in the house expert, so I don't know, I'm just using this as a tutorial, but you can see where this goes. Very simple. Don't worry about the length of a headline, by the way. A lot of the best headlines in the world are lines and lines down the page. I mean, they're long, so don't worry about the length of the headline. How else can we add to this very simple formula? Well, we can look at additions. Additions are things you want to add at the very start of a headline. I'm going to give you two very simple ones. First of all, easy new way to blank. You can add that in front of any headline you've ever written. <laughs> easy, easy new way to stop your dog from being in the house. Okay, easy new just leaps right out at you. It's easy and it's new. New is a very powerful term to use in headlines because people like things that are new. So easy, obviously, is equally powerful. So easy new way to blank. Super easy, it's good, it has a good rhythm to it. We talk a lot about pacing on my channel and in all the, the copywriting lectures I do all over the world, pacing is a rhythm that you're talking about, rhythm of copy. Easy new way to blank. You can hear the rhythm like this, right? So another one I like is revealed, colon, how pro experts. Now experts, is you wouldn't say the word experts. You would say how pro dog trainers stop their dogs from peeing in the house. Think about this for a second. And you can take this idea and run with it even further. For example, you can say, the hidden secrets of celebrity dog trainers, how to stop their dogs from peeing in the house. How do they do it, right? How does the experts do it? So how, do the, how does a doctor cure his headache, okay? This is the aspirin that doctors take to cure their headache. Think of it that way. So those are some really cool little tips to make those headlines really sing. Let's go to the next step. Let's go into those wants, needs, and fears even deeper, asking some questions that we can go from a good headline, this is, these are really good, to a fantastic headline, to an award-winning headline, and you get awards in the headline community, not from ad agencies, but from money, okay? Let's just be, let's just be honest with each other. I just want you to make a lot of money from your headline. First thing you wanna do is ask yourself, what does my prospect want? Remember those three quadrants we're talking about, those three compartments of psychology, wants, needs, fears, what do they want? By the way, I like to write these in, in my own voice. So in other words, I'm writing them in first person. I want to have blank so that you're actually kind of talking as if it's you, but that puts you into the mindset of your avatar, your ideal prospect. I want to have a house that smells nice. Now that's, there's nothing difficult about that, right? That's one thing that they might, might want. Now here's the cool part of this little exercise. You want to ask why. Your next question needs to be why. Now, it seems like an obvious answer, right? Well, because I hate the smell of pee. I mean, <laughs> right? I think most people probably do color me weird. But why else? Um, I'm embarrassed when my friends come over to visit because it smells like dog pee. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. We can use that second one for some really cool headlines. What if any fears? does this topic that you're talking about elicit in your avatar? Well, one fear, they said already, I don't, I wanna have a house that smells clean because I'm embarrassed that people will come over and smell that awful house. So embarrassment is a human fear. People don't like to be embarrassed. So how would that be expressed? How would somebody express being embarrassed about an odor? And one thing that leapt to mind when I was putting this little exercise together is, exactly what happens whenever I have I've had guests come over before and you open the refrigerator and you left that freaking takeout food in there just died one day too long. It's not like you're not like I'm growing mold in my refrigerator or anything, but you left it in there just a little too long. You open it up and you go, ah, man, what's that awful smell? And you kind of do a joke about it. God, it smells terrible. Sorry, guys. You know, and you're covering the embarrassment of like, ah, oh, crap, I just left something in the refrigerator too long. But that's also something someone might say when they walk into a house. Even worse, 
If it's your friend walks into the house and goes, ah, man, what is that awful smell? All I'm doing is answering questions based on wants, fears, and needs. That's how I got to what's that awful smell. The needs, I'm just gonna discard them because we're not even gonna need them for this exercise. But I want you to know the three things that you should look into, wants, needs, and fears. So let's get into the magic now. So we're gonna create a positive headline using the data that we just covered, that we just analyzed, and it's pretty simple. Rest easy when you leave the house knowing that your dog is housebroken. Okay, that's a step up from the headlines that we just wrote at the very first of this video. I'm not even saying that it would convert better. You need to test it, but you need to be able to test these types of headlines against those very basic formulas. Now, let's think about another version of that, and that's a negative version of it. And to create this, I'm literally just taking all the stuff we just laid out in this exercise. Are you ready? Are your friends asking what's that awful smell the moment they leave your home? Now we're getting into some really dimensionalized headlines, right? So when someone reads that headline and the subheadline is, could possibly be the first headline we wrote, right? Stop your dog from being in the house. A, new, a brand new way to stop your dog from being in the house. Find out how dog trainers stop their dogs from being in the house, etc. You see where we're going with this. So you've covered the wow, the intrigue factor. You've covered the shock factor. You've covered the fear factor. And you've got a headline that's intriguing enough to, for them to read the next sentence. And we did this with just a little bit of wordplay and a little bit of exercise around those three quadrants. Okay, now you've got some simple formulas to work with. You've got the very basic formula, you've got some add-ons, and then you've got the really deluxe advanced version of this where you can come up with really creative, compelling headlines that sell, convert, and intrigue your user and prospect to continue reading or to watch your video. I hope this was helpful. I'm John Benson, the Billion Dollar Copy Coach. I'll see you back next time.